On today's episode of The Unwritten Rule, uh, we have the spring football game to recap. Uh, we'll mostly be Peyton. Peyton watched the whole thing, uh, was texting me and Kenny updates through it. Uh, he's got some particular thoughts on the quarterbacks, uh, backing up Brady Cook uh, in next season. So uh, that was the main takeaway. But we'll recap the spring game. Uh, and then we have a great interview. We talked to former Howard running back Ian Wheeler. Um, great interview with him. Talked about football talked about life after football for him. He also went to high school with Kenny. So uh, we talked a little bit about that as well, but he was a great interview. Loved uh, talking to Ian. We'll definitely have him back on the show. Uh, and then we'll have Ken Sports Shorts, Sturdy Birds, uh, and then the Fraud Rankings to finish out Quick Hits. We talk, we're going to talk March Madness too, of course. We're uh, recording this on Selection Sunday. And that's actually my best segue because uh, before we get to our, or we'll do some March Madness picks, but before that, the Unwritten Rule, of course, is sponsored by Bet Online. That's how you make our picks, as Bet Online continues to be your number one source for all your basketball wagering needs, including pro and college hoops throughout the year. With all the up to minutes, odds, stats, trends, and news, you can follow your favorite team's path to the playoffs with live in game betting contests and all the best player props. Experience the world's best wagering platform anytime from your desktop or mobile devices. Head to Bet Online today to become part of the team. And remember to use our promo code BELIEVE for a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online. The game starts here. We were talking. We have we have March Madness. March Madness is here. More importantly, Bet Online has March Madness lines. Has lines for the uh, the tournament already. Kenny and Peyton were recording this. Uh, what a couple hours after the bracket got picked on Selection Sunday. I'm so excited to have a bracket in front of me. Uh, and yeah, we got best beats of the week. I'm starting us off. Uh, we're gonna go. Wait, actually, I need to pull up the bracket because I don't have it memorized what region this is but we're gonna go first over to i'm finding it i'm finding it the midwest region <laughs> going to the 512 in the midwest i got i've been on this team before the cowboys of mcneese they're playing gonzaga uh 512 upsets you know how those always go uh and i love the will wade revenge tour i've been on mcneese on this show before i will continue to rock with the cowboys uh, i think of the five seeds gonzaga is the worst one so I like McNeese here to dump the Bulldogs out of the tournament. Will Wade will not be uh, in southeastern Louisiana for very long. Give me the Cowboys. I'm going to stick pick. with you here. Hey, oh, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, I'm always second. We go, I'm going we go now. Back to three, we go back to three people and it already hits the fan, boys. What are we doing here? Come on. So Kenny, you go. Uh, for my pick, uh, Jack, what region um, is my game in? Uh, I will check. I will check. You are in. Oh, that's the first four. Hang on. It is the first four game. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, so it's Dayton. You're in Dayton. Then. Okay. I'm in Dayton. Uh, Wagner versus Howard. And I felt like, you know, this was an easy game to pick. I mean, how could I not pick Howard in this game after having Ian on the show? And you're going to be listening to that interview uh, shortly after this. But I got some insider information from Ian Wheeler, who knew a lot of these athletes because he was also a student athlete at Howard. And he said it's a super old team. Lots of older guys uh, are leading the team, especially Seth. And uh, that's the the eighth year. I looked it up. There's seven graduate students on this Howard team. It's a very Towns. old team. And uh, yeah, Seth Towns and Bryce Harris. That's the guy you want to look out for. He's going to be a defensive monster with all defensive honors or defense honors and first team honors. This team looks like it's going to make some noise, and I I got them at minus two and a half against Wagner. The uh, I'll add the winner of that goes in to play North Carolina, by the way, in the first round. Um, and Howard also has jerseys that say the Mecca on them, which is our fire. So go Bison. I don't know where this game is. It doesn't really matter to me. You can play this game in Lawrence, Kansas, for all I care. But I am going uh, with the Sanford Bulldogs. Plus six and a half versus Kansas. Uh, been on the SoCon all year. It's a quality conference. Uh, this go around, this Kansas team isn't all that good. Uh, you know the drill. Um, Torvik didn't have this one up, so I didn't get to use that uh, when I last looked. Uh, but, you know, I'm never wrong just early. I post uh, spoilers, not predictions. Uh, so there you go. Sanford plus six. Now. This is in Salt Lake City, by the way, Peyton. Um, so. I guess favors or it's closer to Kansas, but like you said, doesn't matter. 
Got to pick against the Jayhawks. Guy, I'm so. Can we? Can we just? Can we just be happy about March Madness for a second before we dive into the the rest of the show? I'm so excited. No. I would just love to have a bracket in front of me. What do you mean no? No Missouri in it. Missouri was snubbed. well. They were robbed. robbed. You saw Barstool and Mizzou. They Mizzou was robbed. Best zero and eighteen conference team in the country. Nineteen now. Oh, no, yeah. I, I count the yeah. tournament. Yeah. It was poor. I'm just, I'm still excited. Uh, Mizzou, will be, Mizzou will be back. Dennis will figure it out. But we have a bracket. I'm sure we'll do much more, like with, with Bet Online's lines, we'll do much more March Madness stuff, much more bets or many more bets and have March Madness talking quick hits for the rest of the show. But with that, we've got, yeah, you can see there as Kenny's sharing his screen. Go subscribe on the YouTube. Uh, Bet Online's got all the, all the stuff for you. But with that, we'll dive into the Mizzou stuff. We're going to dive into the main stuff of the show. Uh, and the Unwritten Rule starts right now. I just, I, Marcel, where are you going with that disc? You are not putting that on again. Marcel, okay, if you press that button, you are in very, very big trouble. Attention, everybody stop what you're doing. It's time for The Unwritten Rule, a Mizzou sports podcast brought to you by the Believe Network, alongside Peyton Haverman and Kenny Van Doren. Here is your host, Jack Knowlton. Welcome back to the Unwritten Rule. Today is Monday, February 18th, and Mizzou football spring game is in the books. Also, for those watching on the YouTube, we will have the screen share back for quick hits. We're not using it for this opening segment just because, you know, the, we didn't we didn't need to roll highlights from the the spring game. But you can go find anything you want on Twitter if you're if you're really that that desperate to search for them. But yeah, spring football uh, game in the books. Mizzou's a little bit earlier than the rest of the SEC. A lot of these other teams kind of have it a bit later. Um, but I, I'm going to kick it over to Peyton, to be honest. Like like we were talking about in the intro, I've been watching college basketball all week, to be honest. And uh, I've been very locked into that with March Madness starting up. But Peyton, you were texting us some stuff about the spring game. We'll get into the quarterbacks. But uh, first off, you and then Kenny, anything you saw as well, just general thoughts on uh, what you saw from the Black and Gold game. Um. The receivers stood out pretty pretty heavily, I thought. Um, I thought Josh Manning had a nice day. There were two plays where Cook kind of threw 50-50 balls up for him that he didn't play well. Uh, well, he kind of did because there was one to the end zone that Jamarian Wade made a great play on, probably could have picked if Josh Manning didn't strip it from him, and there was another that Cook was picked on. It wasn't a great throw, but... Uh, not a, I mean, he wasn't really able to get back in position to go fight for it anyways, but Josh Manning also had a great high point. I believe it was over Marvin Burks, who was trying to, um, come over and knock it away as Brady Cook just rolled out of the pocket and threw a dime to him. Uh, it was a great play. Uh, Brady Cook was operating with, I think his top three receivers were, Daniel Blood, who made a few plays as well. He looked good. Um, Josh Manning and Marquise Johnson. I think he also had Norfleet, but um, he, like it was very clear. Like They went, okay, Brady, let's see if you can just make it work with the backups. We'll give Luther, Theo Weiss, Mookie Cooper. They were all on Brett Brown's side, um, and later on Aiden Glover as well. Um, so... I thought the receivers stood out. Um, another another thing I would point out is I don't think Drink cares about the spring game at all, which fair enough to him. Uh, I don't really think it's a huge deal, but he definitely just wanted to make it through this thing with a little bit of a PR plus and with nobody hurt. I mean, they had a one-arm tackle rule that just made it. You could not tell. I couldn't get a read on anything the D line, O line, and running backs really did. I could tell Nate no Noel is a uh, is fast. That that much is very clear. He's a good pass catcher out of the backfield, but really couldn't tell much of anything else. Um, my biggest takeaway from this game, I would say, Drew Pine was very much needed. None of the backups I thought were any good. Brett Brown, I feel Weiss was I think getting pretty frustrated with some of the balls he was getting. Uh, it looked like to the point where Kirby Moore just decided to let him throw a double pass 
for a touchdown to Mookie Cooper. Um, and Aiden Glover got in through a pick on his first play, didn't do much of anything. He looked very much like a true freshman. Tommy Locke didn't do anything. Uh, so Drew Pine was very well needed. Sam Horton had a heavy brace. Like, he's out for the year, obviously. So that's about it. I don't think Drink really cares about the spring game. Uh, it wasn't super heavily attended, uh, which, again, I don't really care about. But big win that everyone got through it healthy more than anything else. Yeah, it's like a it's like an all star game at this point. You're, you, you, why risk an injury for someone else's entertainment at this point in the year? And that's where it kind of is. You're not really answering any questions because, like we said, the the roster is not even the full team isn't even there. Your your number two quarterback isn't enrolled yet. There's going to be guys that transfer out, transfer in um, at the end of spring practices when that when that when that window opens next month. Um, I think one of the biggest takeaways is that Marcus Clark had a good pass breakup. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw that on a on a fade route in, into the end zone. And when Peyton was mentioning some of those Brent Brown passes, Marcus Clark broke one up. And I, I think that's something that needs to be noted and it even praised a little bit. But um, another good thing that came out of that is that the helmets, uh, the new decals that they had on the black helmets, the Missouri and the script were cool. Uh, Peyton – that's like my final thing is just, you know, what was you, what were your takeaways from the new yeah, lids? uniform? Uh, very nice. I thought the lids were cool. Um, I know some people were maybe saying they should have said Mizzou instead. Maybe it would have looked better. I'd like to see what it looks like with Mizzou, but I thought it, I'm a, I'm a big script guy. I think it looks good. Um, also, I, I totally forgot to mention this, but you mentioning Marcus Clark reminded me Toriano pride, uh, had a pick. I, think it was brett brown because i think he was on team black um so again grain of salt that one uh but i mean it, it was a pretty solid day for the dbs it was just kind of hard to get a judge off off a lot of things i thought caden green i did watch him for a few plays he never got beat out at left tackle um but again patchwork o-line for the most part um because they were separated uh but yeah the helmets I thought the helmets look good, honestly. The white version. I feel like, better. yeah, I, I feel like with the script font, you got to go with Missouri instead of Mizzou because it's like script's a little more formal. Missouri is the, obviously the formal name. Mizzou is the more fun one. But they could. I wonder if they can make something that said like Mizzou. I don't know what that would. I don't know what that would be, but it, maybe not. Um, yeah. The only other note I had on this, I think Peyton, it was your Twitter that I saw it on. Um, I I'm not gonna name drop anyone because i don't know i don't remember the account otherwise i probably would call this account out um the people who uh like to make fun of a lack of attendance at spring games are stupid uh i just think it's like very silly to try and judge a team's interest in their football program or a school's interest in their football program based on how many students go to the spring game um you know people who love football and people who probably want a little in, maybe want to see some guys they don't remember from last year, some of the freshmen, whatever. It's fun to go to the spring game. It's great that they open it up to the public. I don't, I don't blame you. I don't think anyone's any less of a Mizzou football fan for not going to the spring game. And that, I don't know, people are kind of grasping at straws. I think it's some rival fan bases that uh, can't really handle a Mizzou team that had all the success it did last year. I don't know if you guys have any thoughts on that. I think it's stupid to uh, weigh fan interest in a team based on the spring game attendance. I don't really care either way. I mean, Drinkwitz very clearly just doesn't care about the spring game. It's pretty, I mean, he can't, like, obviously one was COVID year, so he couldn't have it. But I mean, like, last year he moved it inside, like, and they just didn't reschedule it. Uh, the one a couple of years ago I went to, it was fine i mean they signed autographs after the game that was cool um and they did that in this one as well um but yeah drink i mean they just don't really care to make it a huge spectacle like some places more power to the places that do i guess like nebraska i know always makes a huge deal out of the spring game i just i don't find myself caring a whole ton about the spring game either i would if i was in columbia i would have gone to it but i mean i would it's not something i kick myself over missing i meant to mention this last uh when we somewhat previewed it um on friday's show that 
it's not just about, you know, the students and just everyone on campus, you know, being able to go to the game. Uh, Drinkwitz also is a, a big supporter of letting his guys go back home on holiday breaks. We saw that in his first season, actually, with, with the bowl game and some of the players got COVID. And they ended up not being able to play, but he's still, you know, pushes for those guys to go see their families. And with spring break being in a week from now for Mizzou students and those on campus at the University of Missouri, he wanted to get out of the way. And a lot of people mentioned it is an early time for it. Get it over with and just kind of move forward with your spring and let, let those guys be able to go home. Yeah, I think the main thing is just don't – no one got hurt. No one got hurt, and it's good that Drew Pine's here now. That's – that I feel like are the the main – two things that you can thank you and and we have cool script missouri helmets there you go three things um but yeah it you know it was it was solid i think it's a it's a fun showcase fun to build some hype around but yeah it's just hard you know it's not like basketball where you can do these secret scrimmages and play without risking these kids getting hurt and actually go live and stuff like that um you know it's hard to do that in football so it's it's just going to be tough to tell up until we get to that fall camp point but we'll still have stuff coming from spring camp and then obviously the portal will be back open uh, for a short time in a couple of weeks. So, you know, Mizzou's going to have some stuff on there. AD stuff still up in the air, still waiting uh, to see what what will come down on that front. And now we're in now we're in men's basketball offseason, too, where we've got the, you know, the big names like I, I'm trying to think of accounts that do this on Twitter, but that tweet all the, you know, lists of teams tipped that are interested edits. in. Yeah, tipped in edits, all those, you know, people that are interested, like, interested in you a ut martin transfer and missouri starting to appear on those lists so that's fun uh so any stuff that gets significant interest will be uh certainly dissected by us as we want i don't know we want to we want an overhaul bj freeman uw milwaukee name to watch he will be a missouri tiger i'm gonna manifest it into existence whether dennis wants him or not uh anyway let's kick it to ourselves or me and kenny at least doing uh we had a good interview with ian wheeler former Howard running back. Uh, we did hit him with the Mizzou question to start the show, but he's just a, a good a good guy to get a great perspective about the college football life and the grind of it all, uh, as well as some of the stuff he's doing after uh, and his you know goal to kind of try and chase down the NFL. So it's a great interview with him. We'll kick it to ourselves. Okay, we now welcome on a very special guest. Uh, it is former Howard running back in a kick return, punt return specialist, if you will, Ian Wheeler. Um, Ian, you've obviously done a lot on the football field, but I think your most significant achievement is the fact that you went to high school with Kenny and had to endure that. So my first question is, uh, how was he as a, as a youth? And uh, I, I bet that was horrible. <laughs> uh, first of all, good morning, y'all. I just want to say thank you for letting me have me on the show. But no, I love Kenny, uh, <laughs> especially uh, – I'm happy like with how I've been watching him, like not to sound creepy or anything, but like I've been seeing Kenny uh, develop like since we were in high school to becoming like this like journalist and really stepping into his like stepping into his own. But yeah, Kenny was a little awkward in high school. By the time we were seniors, everything was cool, though. <laughs> everything was fun. Yeah, it was tough when I was five uh, two when I entered high school, and then exactly. I think by the end by the end of high school I was six foot, and my friend Zach just told me that I really opened up once I got taller. But um, yeah, of course, Ian and I were in uh, yearbook together, so we did a lot of lot more of BSing in that class than actual yearbook and journalism. We had a lot more fun than actually constructing a book. But Ian, um, we are a Mizzou podcast, and I found a connection to Mizzou that's not me or another friend of ours, Connor, that also went to St. Thomas. You actually played high school football with a former Mizzou football player. Do you know who that guy is? And give you talking about Jaron? I am talking about Jaron Parker, <laughs> who's a uh, walk-on linebacker for the Tigers in yeah. 2017. Uh, that was I had to get that connection there to Mizzou, and that's who it was. For those that don't know, Jaron Parker is also a quarterback at Strike Jesuit, who was our rival, and then transferred to St. Thomas um, for Ooh. his senior year. And yeah. how many times has that happened in history? Uh, doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't really happen. <laughs> doesn't. Yeah, it's dangerous to cross those lines. But yeah, there you go. There's a good Mizzou connection. But yeah, Ian, you know, you obviously you were you were great at Howard. Um, you know, played running back. I know. Think think a little receiver too, right? And then and then did you know obviously special teams, kick and punt returns. Um, you know, I, I guess just to reflect kind of on on your time at Howard first and foremost. Like you know how how was that for you? Kind of getting there, obviously coming from Houston, it's a long way away. Uh, you know what made you want to go there, and and uh, you know how special was it to have a, a career there? Uh, yeah. So coming out of high school, 
uh, and like Kenny understands where I'm coming from with this, just because our school wasn't like an upper echelon, like athletic school, especially for football. Like we always had a bunch of baseball players and yeah, that was really our thing. When we when we first got to St. Thomas, baseball was the thing. Like we had like Captain, like we had Big Yo, we had all these other guys who were going to the draft and stuff like that. But football wasn't really a big thing until our class were seniors because we had me, we had Peyton Matoka, we had Dylan Dix, we had Hunter Cheeks. Like we just had people that ended up pushing our school's name further, so that recruitment was easier. But for us, for our class, it was a lot more difficult to get recruited because of our small school and because, and Texas football is king, but because it's not like other states where private school and public schools together, they kind of like put private school off to the side, like, oh, they're just, mm -hmm. they're not as good. So even though I had a really good year, my senior year, I had like over a thousand rushing yards or whatever, on like limited carries, I would have average like nine yards a carry or whatever. Um, I still like recruiting was light. It was like mostly division three schools. And I talked to some of the coaches at the D three schools. And when we spoke, uh, I asked him like, like bluntly, I was like, do you think I should, do you think I'm good enough to play D one? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, okay, well, well, this is done. Then I appreciate you and everything. But um, I took a chance walking on at Howard. Yeah. Uh, I walked on first year was a little iffy, you know, just trying to like find your role, especially like coming in as like someone like during training camp, everyone else already knows each other and everything like that brand new coach. But eventually we got a new coach. I mean, a new, uh, a new head coach following that. And I found my role as like a running back as, a, um, as a dynamic player and you know earned a scholarship like that time even though i would say it was challenging just being like kind of forcing the issue of like you know you are good enough to be here you are um you're just as talented as everyone else don't doubt yourself type of thing um i think it made me a stronger man a stronger individual and it's something that I needed to do to actually gain the confidence to be in the position I am in now. Yeah. I, I, I love that. The, the respect just saying, you know, right, am I good enough to play D one to these D three schools? Well, I'm going to try it and taking a chance on yourself. That's awesome. If I'm not mistaken, Ian, you, you ran track and field too the first couple of years of college, right? when you were at Howard. Oh yeah. Okay. So I did, <laughs> um, I did jump. And I am, I will, I'm proud to say that I was an all-conference pole vaulter as well as an all-conference running back. But, uh, dude, like, if I'm being honest, track, track in college is crazy. <laughs> track in college is so nuts. Um, because it's like, you know, I'm a jumper, but you can't just jump every day. You have to run. And then, like, because I played football, too, like, that first spring semester – it was right before COVID. This was like the this was horrible. Oh, so yeah. I took, I took, um, I didn't go straight to football to track because I was like, okay, just play football for eleven weeks. My shoulders are messed up. My wrists are messed up. Let me just chill out. So I come back in January, first practice out. David Oliver, love him, love him to death. But he was maxing on the first day. He was doing so much. Like he made us run the warm up lap twice because we didn't run it fast enough the first time. We're doing core at the end. He's like. Oh, I thought football, the football players don't work on core because I'm struggling because I haven't done any of these things before. He was just great guy, great guy, great coach. <laughs> but I just like when I realized I was going to have to do this because I was it would be a day where, OK, wake up at five. You have we're working out at the track teams, working out at the facility, come back, go to class, whatever. You have football lift at this time. You have meetings at this time with football. It just got to be a lot. Like where I just, I was like, I don't know if I can actually balance all this at the same time, but then COVID happened. So I didn't have to really worry about it as much. <laughs> so yeah, it was a blessing in that way. Yeah. Is that, I mean, you know, I, th I think that's really interesting, especially, you know, I, I think with, you know, when we look at football on a way more national like landscape, we look at these guys nowadays who are getting these crazy NIL deals who have all this stuff and, and you forget, yeah, these stories of people who walk on to, you know, programs like Howard and stuff like that and how much of a grind it is. 
Um, you know, I, how was that kind of for you just, you know, yeah, like in those moments where you're maybe questioning some of it, you know, is this is this worth it, especially in that first year? And and what was kind of the payoff for you uh, ultimately when when you realized, you know, yeah, this was this was worth the the time, worth the dedication that I put into it? Um, I would say the most challenging time that I had wasn't like my freshman year because I think once we got through training camp, I kind of knew the team was going to be bad just based off like how the, um, it was just like communication between coaching and stuff like that. Like we were, we were like two weeks in training camp and like everything's numbers. And then one day he's like, scrap it. Everything's going to be words now. So I'm like, Oh, so I learned all this for nothing. And everyone is like, the fact, everyone's confused. Coaches are confused. The players are confused. Everything just looks bad. And then we got decimated by Maryland. Like, I think it was like 79 to zero. And I was like, okay, so we can't do anything. Like we don't even have pride. We can't even I, like, it's hard to go out there and not put up like a fight. And it was just like, okay, well this year's a wrap. But following that COVID, like we had a COVID season in the spring, like didn't really count for much. And that was probably like the toughest time that I've had like playing football just because you know, I'm isolated. It's just, it was just athletes on campus or like just athletes in the area. And they're like isolating us and making sure we can't do certain things. People are sporadically getting COVID because they're doing stuff they're not supposed to. It's just like training camp. It's like, it was like training camp for like a month and a half, like, like way longer right. than it was supposed to be. Like we're going full pads all the time. We're hitting all the time. And, you know, Sometimes it got to the point where it was just like difficult. You think you're getting better. And even if your coach agrees that you're getting better, you're not good enough. So you're not seeing like the time that you want to see on the field. Like you're doing great in practice. And it's just like, well, what does that even mean if like I don't get a chance to actually play? So um, I thought about like, honestly, I thought about quitting then just because it was it's really like mentally taxing to focus on something so much and not see any results. Right. But you know, that's where like controlling the controllables comes in and having the mental fortitude to be like, if not, if not to say that I'm strong enough to get through this, like we finish what we started, but strong enough to like, like believing yourself. I think that's the hardest thing about any of this because it's like in track or in golf or in swimming, all these like individual sports, like you understand that you control everything. Like, mm -hmm. like I go out there, I run my race. No one else can run it for me. But with football, you have to rely on 10 other people to do their job for a play to even work a little bit. If the center does it's not the ball right, the play is done, honestly. So it's just like being able to realize that you handle what you can handle and move forward with that is something that was really important. And that's what really got me through these past couple of years with football in general, even when we weren't doing the best as a team. For sure. You talk about, you know, when you guys struggled, but I mean, this past year, you guys made it to the Celebration Bowl. It was a really good season for Howard. And for people who can't already tell, Ian is a you know a leader, a captain, and he was a leader in high school. And you can see it, the qualities that he had in college. But you played in an NFL stadium before. This wasn't your first time. I mean, when you preparing for this game, did you kind of like, you know, get these guys ready, um, you know, for this kind of big stage? Because it was, I mean, the biggest thing for – it's the HBCU championship almost. Yeah. Um definitely uh i'm talking a lot right now but i'm usually not a man of many <laughs> words so i think the biggest thing for getting prepared for something like this is just you know making sure that like as a leader you're firing on all cylinders and putting your best foot forward and showing people who haven't been on a stage like this necessarily what to do what not to do and that doesn't start just the week of or two weeks before that starts throughout the season, being someone that everyone can rely on you to be. Like, I know um, I know Ian's gonna show up on time. I know Ian's gonna do this. I know he's gonna give his all in the weight room. I know he's gonna give his all in practice. Like, being consistent with that and 
leading by example and even being a servant leader by like making sure that your teammates are good, making sure that they're set up to be successful, whether that's sharing notes, because honestly, I don't care about sharing notes. This isn't a test. We're all trying to pass right now. Like we're all trying to win. Mm-hmm. Um, sharing notes, being encouraging because you never know what people have going on outside of football. Like yeah. people's people's families, like people, unfortunately, families pass away. Um, family members pass away. School is a real stressor. Um, some people are working while they're doing football. It's just like you have to be mindful of that and still be encouraging because we're all going through this together. No doubt. Yeah. And I, I think that's yeah a really powerful thing to appreciate is like the lead by example kind of thing. Cause you, do, you don't realize when, you know, you rely on those people, like it kind of goes unnoticed. Like it's like, but then you, you kind of look back, like when someone like you's out of the program, it's like, Oh, shoot. Ian used to do all these things. And now, now I have to step up. Like, so it's, it's setting a good example for sure. Um, on a, on a more fun note, I think you do the most fun thing in football, which is like kick and punt returns, where it's like something that, you know, when it pays off, it's like the best thing ever, even though, you know, it's obviously very hard to house a kickoff, house a punt. Uh, walk me through some of your favorite moments on kickoffs and punt returns. I know you housed, what was it, a 94 yarder against NC Central uh, the other year? Uh, you know, when, when you get the ball in those moments, do you know, like, like, you just look up and see, Oh, the blocks are perfect. I got this hole. I'm gone. Or is it a little like, is it a little more like improv? I'm not going to say it's improv just because (laughs) like I'm supposed to follow a certain way. Uh, I'll say uh, when you get the ball first, like every time I touch the ball, I want to score every single time I touch the ball, no matter what, like, unless, you know, two minute drill, like we're trying to save clock, but it's still like, I can score on this. I'm just, I need to get out of bounds, but um when you catch it i'll tell you like catching kickoff return is probably like some of the most fun stuff you can do just because it's like like everyone is watching you there's no doubt that the ball is going to you um but sometimes you catch it and you take like you take that first step and you see a scene and you're just like okay i see it is it actually going to stay there Cause a lot of times it doesn't like someone misses their block. So like this one, like a crazy dude on the other kickoff returns. I mean, on the kickoff team that doesn't care about his body, just throws himself at everyone else. And it's just like, okay, well I can't go that way anymore. Uh, but no, it's uh, you're right. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun <laughs> to do kickoff returns. My favorite one. Yeah. This past year, this past year, the one against Robert Morris was really cool. I just didn't think I would I, like, cause I only got um one shot at it. Like it was my only kickoff return and I took it. And then after that, they stopped kicking me the ball, which is respectable. I get it. <laughs> um, that one was really good. And then my first, my first was really good because it was homecoming. And oh, that was nice. like the play that like turned the game around. It was just like, oh, okay. Like we're like, we're going now we're rolling. Yeah, that makes the difference in the game. People don't know three phases, like break a game. Yeah. Open. Special team, special players is what I keep hearing on social media. And that's, I mean, that's what you're, you become Ian. It's like this uh, Swiss army knife of what you can do. And when you're preparing, I mean, you're preparing for the next level. Now um, you've been working out we've, we found some time with you right now because you've been so busy getting ready. But um, when you're kind of, you know, pitching yourself and you're, you know, showing film, do you kind of just like, you know, say like you're this mold of guy, like, you know, Dario Wungulale, who was a, you know, a specialist, but he can also be a running back or somebody like Matthew Slater who does it all on special teams. Like, are you kind of pitching yourself, you know, I'll, I'll plug in wherever I can go? Um, Absolutely. Just because knowing that I'm coming from a smaller school and knowing, um, like, we had a, like, backfield by committee and everything like that, knowing that my running back numbers aren't as high as some of these other guys. At this point, it's about putting myself in the best position to make a roster and to um, play professionally. And when it comes to that, being versatile is like one of the most important things. Like, yeah, I can run the ball. I can run inside zone, outside zone, power counter. But I can also take a kick return to the house. I can also go on punt and make a tackle as a gunner. I can go on kickoff and do whatever you need me to do. Like, it's like being versatile and being available are like, the most valuable things you can be because then someone else doesn't have to do that job. 
like he could just do it all. Right. Yeah, that's sound. I I draft I draft him. We need. We, I don't know. We can't. We don't have any connections with NFL teams, but we'll tweet film. I don't know. We'll get Thank we'll you. get Ian Wheeler's name out there. <laughs> um, I I want to ask. I have a I have a fun one, and uh, you know I'm sure we'll have a couple more football questions. But I'm looking at your bio uh, on just Howard, and under under why it chose Howard, it just says it's because of the black squirrels. Is I love the, how this comes this up like every a, interview. <laughs> what? Every interview, I, every interview I've ever Everyone done, they asks. always ask me about this. Uh, dude, well, like, okay, so yeah. basically, I uh, I was visiting Howard the summer before my senior year, and I was walking around campus, and like we're t- like, we're just walking and talking. It wasn't a formal. Well, no, it was a formal interview, and like it was just a handful of us. And she was like, "Yeah, we have black squirrels on campus," and I was like. No, you don't. Like, don't lie to me in front of all these people, right? And we pass like a building, and all you see is like a black squirrel leak out. And I'm like, is that a rat? That's the first thing I thought. Like, is that a rat? Like, why is that? Like, what is that right there? It's a black squirrel. And I was like, this is like one of the most unique places I've ever seen because it's like you know Howard's HBC. I was like, they got black people, they got black squirrels. Life is good, like good vibes. <laughs> so, I would say. That was something that was attractive. I'm not going to say it was the biggest reason why I came to Howard. I'm not going to lie to you guys, but it was something that was definitely really cool because that only happens in like two parts of the country. Yeah, I respect putting it as your bio to be like, I don't need to do a real reason. I'll just I'll just say that. Why not? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think the first time I saw one was in Michigan, and I was like, this is just not real because I've grown up and they've always been like silver or gray looking. It's like it's yeah. it's very like weird to see one because they just don't look right almost. But um, Ian, you played five years in college and you were a part of you know the era of college football that there were so many extra years of eligibility. It was a COVID year thrown in. Did you have another year? Like, could you have gone back for a sixth year? No, my freshman year we used. I was a special teams guy, so I used all my eligibility. I played like ten games. That was going to negate my next question because if you did have another year, I would have had Mizzou put in a transfer request because they could use a they could use an elite return specialist. Um, <laughs> you didn't know, yeah? How can you how can you not have known in five year in five years ago that, that someone else will be calling? Um, well, yeah, and and we kind of touched on it, but your goals for you, you know, to kind of get to that next level, I'm I'm curious, kind of what that process looks like, you know, for someone who obviously, you know, there's there's not the draft combine, it's it's a little bit of a a smaller scale thing. Is it kind of like, you know, like you said with high school, it was more, you had to put your tape out there really kind of, uh, you know, put yourself out there because, you know, your, your school at the time wasn't, uh, you know, attracting all the big coaches and stuff like that. Is, is it kind of a similar process now where you're, you're kind of pushing really hard to get in touch with coaches, scouts, whoever you can. I'll say that this past year made it a lot easier. Um, the, this in the season 2022 season we had a share of the MEAC title so because of that like teams knew that like NFL teams knew that we were good we had a couple prospects on the rise like our left tackle he was at the um, combine his name's the name um, we have our safety this year his name's Kenny that's coming out this following year uh that was funny my bad yeah kenny gallup <laughs> but uh <laughs> uh there's a lot of talent on our roster so this past season there were a lot of scouts that were coming into our building like we had a scout or two every week and just having the opportunity to put yourself and show how you work in front of those scouts is major outside of that like for me personally and for a handful of our teammates they had uh an hbcu combine in february the week before the weekend before the legacy bowl so i got an opportunity to speak to a lot of teams there um did some interviews and then showcase some testing numbers in front of them and i would say that went pretty well i got to i got to impress again during the legacy bowl i would say the legacy bowl i was probably I'm not gonna i'm not gonna be conceited but i was probably one of the better players there I think I got to showcase that, like, even in an all-star game type situation, I was probably one of the more um, thorough and, like, talented players there. So um, outside of that, you know, we have our pro day coming up on the 28th. So it's just been 
like you said, it's been a grind, just trying to make sure that I put myself in good situations. And when the opportunity presents itself, like, don't be surprised by it, you know? For sure. Ian, I mean, how much would it mean if you suited up in a Saints uniform at some point, even just a camp invite? So, okay. <laughs> if I'm being honest, like, I wanted to talk to the Saints so bad. They didn't want to talk to me. And that's fine. I'm not tripping about it. Like, you know, an opportunity is an opportunity. But if I got a Saints jersey, I would probably cry, like, on the spot. Like, if I was in front of, like, Ben's, like, Mr. and Mrs. Benson, and I had to, like, sign a contract, and it's just like, yeah, like, you're a New Orleans Saint, at least for today. Like, I don't know what happens tomorrow, but, like, today you're a New Orleans Saint. I would cry, and, like, like, I don't know. That would be great. I would, I would love to play for the Saints. But not to yeah. take anything away from any other NFL teams. I've just been a lifelong <laughs> Saints fan my entire life. Do not take what I'm saying. I want an opportunity. I don't need the Saints. <laughs> <laughs> any team will do, but the Saints. Any yeah, that, team will that, do. That was, I, I was going to ask, like, what's the dream uh, – What's the dream scenario for you team wise? But yeah, the Saints, that would be that'd be sick. They 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 could yeah, they could use a they could use a dynamic returner. Um yeah. what's your favorite New Orleans Saints memory as a fan? As a fan? <sighs> Dude, like this um I'm really trying to make sure I actually give you a real memory and not just like a picture because that Reggie Bush pick, like that Reggie Bush play is iconic where he like jumps over the guy's iconic. So I'm not going to do that one. <laughs> give him his Heisman back. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Um, there's probably just, there was this play that Drew Brees had like, no, I take it back. It's going to be an Alvin Kamara play. It's the play where he's just jogging. It looks like he's jogging. He caught the screen. He broke like six tackles. And then he just like kind of walks into the end zone. It's either that or there's a play where Drew Brees, when he's like 37, like gets out of two sacks and then dives into the end zone. I forgot what team they were playing, but it was great. Yeah, yes. those are my two. I remember the Kamara play. That was wild. What about the uh, NFC Championship game against the Rams? Oh and you know what? <laughs> I will say this. As I've gotten older, like, you know, people like as, as you get older, you realize more about football. You're not supposed to put yourself in a position for the refs to dictate the game. So it's like while that was a bad call, like one of the worst calls I've ever seen in my life. And we should have gotten the first down and just like in the end of the game right there. You're not supposed to put yourself in a position. There were mistakes that happened earlier in the game that put us in a position where that was critical. And I'm not sure. mistaken, too. They had opportunities after the flag, too. I think that, yeah. yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Um, but like, I will say this. Like, when you get a crazy call like that, it does take the wind out. Like, it takes the wind out of the stadium. It's just kind of like, wow. Because, like, the Superdome got quiet because that doesn't make sense. Everyone's just looking at you like, there's no way these zebras just call that. But <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever argued with a ref? Or do you try and no. do you try and keep an even keel? I guess it's harder to happen. It doesn't happen it's, as much. It's not. It's like that's not my role. If someone wants to argue with the ref, let it be a coach or a quarterback. They can talk all day. I don't. I don't have time to talk to a ref. Fair enough. I, I'm. I'm curious, Ian, just because, like, you know, you're obviously just a super smart guy, very mature, and, and like, you know, I, I know NFL is a dream. But what what would be the uh what would be the dream gig for you? Uh, if if NFL doesn't work out, do you want to stay kind of in football and maybe coach or do something like that, or what's the what's the dream? It, that's very funny you ask because I was talking to my mom about this the other day. Um, so I, I like, I've applied to medical schools and I've gotten into some medical schools. Oh, wow. So like right now I'm just kind of in a situation where not many people are in a position that I'm in. Mm -hmm. um, it makes me, I'm going to be blunt, like slightly uncomfortable because it's like, do I deserve all this? Do I just like, am I taking someone else's place because I have, the opportunity to pursue uh, medicine or like the opportunity to pursue a lifelong dream when it comes to being a professional athlete, specifically a football player. And it's like, you know, it's a bit of a, like an imposter thing because it's like, like this is a lot. Like there are some people who apply to medical school like 10, 15 times and just don't get in. Like they just don't get in no matter how much they try. And here I am. Got I got into um McGovern Houston. It's like a really good school. Um part of
part of the UT system. So like got into McGovern, got into my alma mater, um, Howard. And it's just like, it's weird. It's weird because it's like, I keep saying it, but it's just like, I feel like I shouldn't have this much, but I understand at the same time that I did work for it. It's not like this fell out the air. Like I did. I've been doing this since like high school. I've been putting myself in the best position to succeed since high school. And it takes a certain amount of discipline and honestly, a certain amount of luck too, to um, be in a position like this. So yeah, that's, that's kind of where I'm at with it. That's great. You, you'd be like a Josh Dobbs. Like, you know, everyone, everyone calls him the pastor not cause he's, you know, the super smart guy as well. That, that yeah, could be a... That's he's so freaky for that. Like, I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> NASA at the same time is so crazy. Yeah. That is wild. That is wild. Well, I mean, Ian, if you do go the medical route once the football, you know, once your football career is over, and we hope it's not over anytime soon, um, what do you what do you want to be? Are you, like, what's the medical path that you're, you're thinking of? Uh, right now, I am set on being a psychiatrist. Got good books in here. This is actually very random that this popped up. Go. This book's about trauma. Good book, y'all should read it. It's actually it's written by a doctor. It's called The Body Keeps the Score. It's written by a doctor, but it doesn't sound doctory. It's actually like pretty good right. for the most part uh, until you get to the back end. The back end does sound kind of little doctory, but <laughs> outside of that, like really good read, really interesting read. Um, but yeah, psychiatry, just because like, you know, mental health is something that is on the rise. And I think as men, um, that's something that at times we neglect a little bit, whether we want to admit it or not, just because of the men that raised us or the people that raised us in general or the situations that we had when we were younger. So um, knowing that and keeping that in mind with mental health becoming a more valid concern, you see like more of it every day. Uh, I like to be a part of that new wave to not necessarily, I want to take, keep taking a step towards mental health, but like a lot of, another big thing is like the opioids and certain types of drugs that are slightly concerning just because you know they're not the best for you they're not good to get addicted to um so being a part of the next wave that focuses more on like mindfulness and other types of skills and techniques to be able to improve your mental health and work through things like that so yeah awesome. that's where i'm at with it yeah. I think that's especially great too, as, as like an athlete, you know, that that's a big thing I feel like in sports is, is, you know, athletes, mental health, especially in college, like you were just talking about the grind you had to go through, like, you know, that takes a toll, not only physically on y'all, but mentally, I, I just think that's great. And a, a great thing to, uh, to pursue. I think that's the first book recommendation we've ever had by a guest. On the show also, so we appreciate that. We're, we're, we're broadening our horizons. We need to get smarter. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll ask this just, uh, you know, we talked about kickoff returns. Um, other, any other favorite memories, whether it was getting one over on uh, a rival, scoring in a big game, um, you know, your time at Howard, any, any other, any other big moments stand out or any other funny moments on the sidelines too? I always, I always wonder what, you know, guys are joking about when they have some time on the bench, especially in football. Um, good memories. I would say, um, uh... Honestly, some people have like these photographic memories when it comes to the game and they know exactly what happens. I do not like, <laughs> do not remember that. Like, I, I'm going to be honest. Tell that to like, Sean McVay when he interviews you. I will not. I'll just <laughs> like, he, <laughs> I'll just be honest. He's crazy with I'll, that. Yeah, no, he like, like, when I've seen those interviews where he's like, yeah, it was this, this, and this, this, how much, this much time left on the clock. We call it this, this. And I'm just like, no, I'll just remember what my job was. <laughs> if I'm being honest, I'll remember what my job was. But I would say this year, like the most fun, this was probably some of the most fun that I had with the team, just because we all knew that we were good enough um, to succeed. And it makes it a lot easier to do your job and not really stress about it when you're in that situation. So, um, just laughing and joking, a lot of jokes in practice, a lot of jokes um, with teammates, uh, with coaches, honestly. A lot of jokes with coaches. Or coaches that was is, is exceedingly goofy, to be honest with you. But uh, favorite memory, though, would have to be like, and this isn't necessarily like a football memory exactly, but it's with football players. Um, 
coming home after a game and like we're all it's just the ride back it's really the ride back every time yeah um especially after winning something like after beating a team that we're no we're, you know we're supposed to beat or something like that just like yeah guys like we're doing this you hear like like the wide receivers in the back just cackling and stuff like that just doing the most outrageous stuff and then everyone in the front is trying to get sleep it's just <laughs> the, like list the little moments like that like team dinners and um like sessions in the weight room when we're playing like you know miles in the weight room is just <laughs> a lot of fun i'm glad you got that because i didn't know his oh, name yeah. until like two or three days ago but <laughs> i was playing it in the car it was actually such a mess he's, but he's got some bangers uh, <laughs> bangers is crazy but i'll yeah <laughs> I'll let you rock uh, if you can even call them that definitely something they're funny something. they're very funny they're, uh but like yeah it would be stuff like that that i'm really gonna miss and just like seeing um these guys that i like really kind of grew up and developed with that's that's what i'm gonna miss for them. that's awesome ian i have uh one last question here and i don't you don't have to do the whole song because it is a pretty long one but can you do the saint thomas high school alma mater i uh, i did we did this with josh wolf and he did not remember it at all I was trying to get him to sing it, and Josh was – he had no idea. I'm really I'll give you the first couple. It. I can give you the first okay, couple. St. Thomas uh, Middle. Men of St. Thomas. And then you <laughs> – um, <laughs> Oh, my gosh. You're saying this at least more than once a month. No, yeah. I know that, but it's Four just like – I was just uh, – I'm trying to remember. Um, mm, 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 mm. Dude, uh -oh. it's a, no, dude invited, I'm not going to lie to you. Back for these, the alumni there events. are so <laughs> many anthems. Like, I'm trying I'm trying not to, like, mix in the Black National Anthem or, like, anything else, like, into it. I, all I know is that, like, it ends with the dun, dun, of St. Thomas High. I remember that. And I think we did, like, this. We did, like, a fist bump in the air. I, I don't remember, but... <laughs> Uh, I think, it, yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, man, I, I guess I I'm just a little more proud for I guess I have more pride I, for her. I for wear her my gear everywhere. I wear my gear everywhere. It is. I promise you I wear my gear. I just do not remember the song. I feel like if I was in a situation where there was like 30 of us, I would mm -hmm. pick it up once we got started going. Like, into the groove i would pick it up and start remembering stuff but no i that's crazy because i haven't thought about that song in over four years <laughs> that's uh that was like the same thing with josh it, it felt like he was gonna pick it up he did not know a single word like i got through it like halfway and he wasn't even doing it with me so <laughs> at, at least you're you would admit that you, you could uh possibly pick it up over time possibly possibly well, you know, we'll we'll have uh we'll have our friend Connor McGovern who played with you at St. Thomas. You guys will both come back on and I don't know, figure it out together. Maybe we'll get Josh. We'll get that big room of all former St. Thomas athletes. Kenny can be thrown in there, JV soccer player, cross right. country. Cross country guy. We're in cross country. Yeah. I got I got a D three letter once. And actually it's <laughs> funny you say that our uh Ian and I's friend Juan texted me uh last night and he said, Remember that D three school that offered us? They're pretty good at track and field today. So he went to a meet yesterday. Probably because you didn't go there. Exactly. I texted him that. I was like, there's no way they're good. They wanted me. <laughs> uh, well, Ian, we, we appreciate you coming on. This has been this has been awesome. Um, we'll have you back on another time. You're you're a recurring guest now. So now that you're added to our rotation, you're required to come on whenever we whenever we put in a request, even if you have to play a, a game against the Falcons the next day. Um Got you. you know, we'll have to make time, but we appreciate it so much. Best of luck with everything, man. Thank you, guys. I appreciate y'all having me on and uh, letting me talk about this stuff. Okay. Thank you to Ian. That was, this was a fun interview. I want to have him back on, uh, you know, talk football, especially when he gets signed by the Saints. Uh, quick, it's time. With that, we'll segue. Kenny, uh, you have Ken's sports shorts. I... We're going to bring up what we were just talking about off air before we hit record again. I can't believe you don't have a sporkle quiz about March Madness on Selection Sunday. Yeah. I know Mizzou's not in it, but that's ridiculous. Yeah, but I think this one's cool because 
if you saw the news recently and it's very unfortunate and I feel I feel really for the bad for the people who work there because now they just are probably without a job at the moment. But there is a very well-known Noodles & Co. that, um, I mean, there was a fire there today and that just made me think about like what other places in Columbia, like if these places like would it disappear, I mean, I'd be pretty sad. And I feel bad about that right now. So I thought about some other places and I found the sporkle about Mizzou landmarks and I thought it would be pretty cool if you guys could name each one based on the clue. All right. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. Fair. Ken's Mizzou shorts. Okay. That is a good question, too. My one, number one answer would be a place that is burned down already, and that's the shack. Mine would. What's your that doesn't count. How does that not count? You cannot say that. You can't say no, that you've I never it, been. No, I think it counts. I think he's saying like the, the modern the, the shack. Ne- like the modern really shack. Had. Like if that went away. Yeah. You're saying you were saying the regular shack. You said it's already burned down. Well, but yeah, because I think it he, burned I think down once. Been. Yeah, like I know the actual shack. But the down, way you made it sound is saying that you're missing the old shack, the original one that burned down. No, I'm saying the one I would miss now is the shack because the shack, like the branding, that building, the original shack burned down. It was connecting. Okay. It was a segue. I, I get. What, I think I get. Nolan got it. I think I got it. Kenny, what would your place be that you would never want to have burned down <laughs> around Mizzou? Or um. Well, there's a lot of brick buildings, so that's not. Like none right, of those are going to burn down. We know that's impossible. Um, I don't know. Let's say the uh, third floor I... of Lee Hills, Lee Hills Hall, okay. north side of campus. I have my off-campus one. I don't know what my on-campus would be. Probably the rec. I wouldn't want the rec to burn down. No more basketball. Off-campus okay. would be the understudy. If you know, you know. Let's do it. Ready. You want to take you want to take yeah. turns, Peyton? Because I'm looking at these, and I think we're gonna knock this out pretty quick. Yeah. Can you zoom in just a bit whenever you start it, Kenny? Okay. Yeah, that's good. All right, Peyton, you can go first. Yeah, that's uh, this building is the newest addition uh, to the J School. So that's not Lee Hills, is it? Lee Hills isn't the newest. Um, is it Reynolds? Yeah, RJI. Yeah, RJI. I don't know if. Yep. Yeah, okay. okay yeah. Uh, this would be the Hearns Center, the home of Tigers Volleyball. Is that how you spell Hearns? No. Is it E-A-R. E-A-R. Oh, yeah. It's on the building, man. Come on. Burrow Field. Mm. Or oh, no. Memorial no, Stadium. No. Memorial Sto- Stadium. Pete Bland was... Oh. That's so. Yeah, that is field. wrong. What a That's shocker! Not yeah. The whoa, home. whoa, whoa, whoa! No, they play on Furrow Field. They play at on Furrow Field. This is Pete Bland is is quaking in his boots somewhere. Um. Oh, is this That's just Jesse one. Hall? Oh, we should say the questions too for the people listening. This building hosts the university's concert series and houses its administrative offices. Uh, it's Jesse yeah, Hall. Yeah. Should be. This landmark divided, landmark into, divided, north divided south. into north and south. <laughs> is it South Columbia? <laughs> is it South Hall? <laughs> like North and South Hall, Center Hall? I don't think it would be that <laughs> detailed. I don't know if it's going into this which landmark. landmark? Is it, it's is it ti- Tiger is Avenue? It? Isn't Tiger Avenue north and south? That's probably a dumb answer. I don't know. Okay. This landmark is divided in the... Do you have any idea, Kenny? Mm-mm. Just keep going. Let's go to the next one. Just keep going. Uh, okay, well, the venue, Mizzou Arena is the next one. Yeah, the, ven- the venue is the home of Tigers basketball in Mizzou Arena. This landmark boasts a giant statue that many students ride. It's just the oh, Tiger right. statue, isn't it? That's the Tiger statue, yeah. You guys all took a photo on the Tiger statue, right? What do you call that, though? Oh, what's oh, the, name fountain. Of that? the fountain. The it's a the fountain. fountain. Yeah. No, but what's, it doesn't have a name? Tiger, Tiger Fountain? Uh, I, I feel like we can look that up. Like we know yeah, what we're really talking about. Nothing's here. popping hey, up. This dining facility is housed in Johnston. Oh, that, it's Sabai. It's Sabai. Do you know why yeah. I know this? It's because Kenny I, and our good friend, or not Sabai. What's the name of it? Sabai? It's not Sabai. Is, is it, it not Sabai? What's the name of it? Sunshine. No, that's Sunshine Sushi's in the. Oh, it is Sabai. No, Sabai is, is definitely in Johnston. How old is this? It's not. <laughs> I don't know. You picked it up. 2017. 2017. 
Uh, okay, well, well I the, thought I well okay. the main library he, on campus is Ellis. Let's just get that yeah, one. Yeah, that's out of the Ellis. Way. This building houses the Honors College. Oh, I know exactly uh, where it is. It's it's on a is, how to it, tell it, that we were not, not in the Honors College. Watch. Yeah, it's in that. Yeah, well, no, or is it's it like, in, on the Lowry Mall? It's on Lowry Mall. It's big. Yeah, sign. it's on. Yeah, it's. I can't remember the name of the building though, which makes us look like idiots. Yeah, we're not in the Honors College. None of us were in the Honors College. Oh, okay, okay well, President's got, original oh, tombstone, okay. Thomas Jefferson. Okay, so we need the landmark divided into north and south. The one that the giant statue is the fountain. I just don't remember what the fountain's called. Official name. Dining is. facility housed in Johnston, and the building that houses the Honors College. The dining facility is Sabai. Like I, it is Sabai. Like now it is. I'm gonna look up um, how to spell it. It's S A B A I. Mm -hmm. Didn't um, work. Yeah, I, I saw that. Yeah, you're right. And I always, I always remember that because Kenny and Chase didn't think you could. They could go in because they weren't girls. <laughs> <laughs> um, did did it did it replace something? It, it had, had to. Have. to have. Um, McDonald's. <laughs> no, that was in Lowry. Yeah, there there was a McDonald's. McDonald's. I'm so embarrassed that I can't think of the name of the Honors College because I can picture it can right it. next to Middlebush. Yeah. Um, and right across the north, from what the What is quad. the North and South one? The North and South one, I have no idea. Oh, wait, is it, it's not the, the columns, is it? The, it? There's nothing that indicates it's North campus. and South. <laughs> north and South campus. I'm surprised the columns aren't on here as like an answer. Everybody would be able to get the. How, much, how much longer do we want to go until we give up? <laughs> I mean, we we know that we know. Obviously, we don't know the the dining I facility. Don't, why don't I remember what the like. fountain is called? It's yeah, got, the dining yeah, facility. I mean, we don't know got, like, the like, honors college. The that's so. That's. It. Do you want me to? Do you want? Should I look them up and you two could try and guess? Like I could try and give you hints. What? Or is that not? Is that no fun? Um. I'll just read them off one last time, and then we can right. just pause Call it. it. Yeah. All right. so landmark is divided into north and south. The landmark, this landmark boasts a giant statue that many students ride. This it's dining fun. facility is housed in Johnston, and we believe we have those two. Just don't know the official names, or maybe names were changed. And then this building houses the Honors College. We know where it okay, is, wait. just don't know the name of it. If you know in the comments, comment right now. There are people that are window. screaming yeah, at us right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, I'm giving up. This is why we should have done it. The north and south one, I think, might be the engineering building, like the like it's the one in union. front of it. Oh my god! Oh yeah, yeah, we're dumb. We're dumb. We should have got that one. Oh, <laughs> what the heck? That's why I said. I said Lowry. Oh, oh Lowry I said Hall. Lowry Mall. Oh, but you said That's Mall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Eva Jays yeah. isn't a thing. That's made up. Look that up. Tiger Plaza. Okay, that makes sense. Oh, that's Tiger what Plaza that's has the best called. view on campus, and there are a lot of good. So views wait, on wait. Campus, but... For to, to go over, so the landmark divided north and south was Memorial Union. We're dumb. People were definitely screaming about that one. <laughs> landmark that boasts the giant statue is called Tiger Plaza, and then the dining facility housed in Johnston Eva J's. That's before our time, and then yeah. the building houses the Honor College Lowry Hall. We said it was on Lowry Mall, which is on yeah, Lowry Eva Mall. J's. Yep, go. says goodbye. Her. Hello to New Meal. That was in 2011. This is the man-eater. What do you think Brandon Grammer? Is he related We're to Andy Grammer? <laughs> you found him. It, I don't think Coach Grammer. Saying, don't think this is brand, our Brandon Grammer. Hmm. This is ridiculous. Wait, yeah. go back to the man-eater <laughs> article. Well, I mean, we saw it. It's 2011. It's gone. What kind of no? What kind of thing was it though? Because this quiz was made in 2017. Style. I'm not gonna lie. So I know Asian people. Style. No, 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 no. Pasta Primavera. That's what it used to serve. Huh. There you go. Go read Brandon Grammer's article on the Man Eater from 2011. You don't have to go do that. He's <laughs> 13 years old. I think he's good. Um, yeah, that's wild. I was 10 years old. I'm not gonna way. lie. The memorial one. I just. I never really spent any time on that side of campus like those building waters hall and all that i was never i had one class over there in my four years white campus is the waters the name for it is that all what the they call it are white on the other and side mm -hmm. and the other sides yeah like the red 
There you go. All right. Well, some people are definitely screaming at us for that, but uh, yeah. good job to if you got all of those. We did not. Uh, dirty. Let's do Dirty Birds of the Weekend. Kenny, what's your Dirty Bird of the Weekend? Uh, my Dirty Bird of the Weekend oh. goes to Kirk Cousins, and I thought this was really cool. I saved it. It could have been my main bird, but how, how could I not make it the Dirty Bird? If you're looking on YouTube right now, you can see it. Kirk with his two sons, and they have Dirty Bird chains. That's just awesome. Really cool to see uh, for Kirk and just, I mean, got a bag and there's nothing dirty about that. It's all, uh, it's all clean money for our, for our good guy, Kirk Cousins. Big Kirk. All time. Yeah. All time bag getter. I mean, geez, he's 36 years old coming off a horrific leg injury, getting $180 million. Good for him, man. I can respect that. Um, and you know, I do think the Falcons get better. So I was going to say, I think the Falcons are going to be pretty good. Like maybe I'm I'm buying too much in on the hype. I think the Falcons are gonna be pretty good. Very easy division too. Right. We don't mm-hmm. know who's up in the air. Division. Him, them in Tampa. Mean, yeah. Moving on. Uh, My Peyton. dirty bird of the week. It is going to be or weekend. Uh, Kent State's Julius Rollins. This is a. This is rough. Um, so Kent State Akron, which is already itself a huge full, full screen that Kenny. Yeah. Uh, already a huge rivalry game i mean it, it they met in the mac championship a spot in the ncaa tournament in the line ken state is trailing with uh 10 seconds by one they get a put back bucket they go ahead by one with 6.2 but julius rollins he just kind of panics you know your brain's just in overdrive there it's just kind of on autopilot because he he is he just was like oh crap i got a foul because his mindset was oh we're still down just an unfortunate foul. Uh, he fouled him. There was a cut to the bench that showed him yelling, "What the f did I do?" And just buried his hands in his in his head in his hands. Akron, the Akron player that was fouled, made both free throws. Akron now has a game in the NCAA tournament. Um, it's tough, but I mean, you got to know the situation. You got to be able to keep your composure. Julius Rollins, unfortunately, was not able. to. This is March, man. This is March. It's unfortunate, but you have moments. You have moments like this. We've there's there's all sorts of crazy storylines. No, you got to you definitely you definitely got to feel for him. You definitely got to feel for him. Dress rehearsal. Kirk wakes up dripping like this. (laughs) You downloaded that before the Kirk before you were done, Kenny. But I couldn't get it off. (laughs) It was only on my end. I'm like, like, where is this playing from? It's oh like, my like, good uh, lord, also, dude! How long, how long do you think we could get away with uh with hopping on here live and Kenny just screen shares and streams NCAA tournament games until we get? Until we yeah, get I was off. gonna say we may not be able to do what we just did, but I mean it was on, it's on Twitter. Contact, so. It's on Twitter. It's not live. It's not live. What's your dirty? We have bird? the express. We have the express recent written consent of the NCAA. Um, <laughs> my dirty bird. I'm staying in college basketball. I'm doing. I'm doing Joe Lenardi uh for my dirty bird he i linked this one tweet and peyton i know you're gonna you're gonna talk about this in a second in the fraud ranking so i won't mention this tweet specifically but joe lenardi has just been like uh mm, like he's just he's just off the dirty bird connection by the way joe lenardi is a saint joe's graduate they are the hawks uh so there's your bird um he got a community noted the other day he posted his uh nightly bracket update and it was it was uh it was a link, Kenny. I might have sent you the wrong tweet. I'm not gonna lie. I think you did. Uh, <laughs> I might have pasted I might have pasted the wrong tweet in there. Because that's the thing Peyton's gonna have in fraud rankings, which is my bad. But he got community noted. He tweeted his nightly bracket update and it had Illinois highlighted red like they had lost a game. Uh and that was after they beat Nebraska in the Big Ten semifinal. And the community note literally just said Illinois literally won tonight. Uh so Joe, off his game at the time when, you know, this is all he does, you gotta be you know, playing your best basketball in March. Joe's got to be doing his best bracketing in March. He was off with some of the picks today when the bracket came out. So Joe Lenardi might be washed. I don't know. Which makes me worried because Jerry Palm, who's the CBS guy that does this, had uh, Iowa State as a one seed, and they did not get a one seed. So neither of them are very good at forecasting. So Yeah, Iowa State wasn't even close. They weren't even the first one. They weren't even the first two seed that was on the bubble for that. So, I mean, I can't get too mad at Lenardi. I mean, it's a horribly busy time of year for him. He's constantly 
throwing resumes around, closing desktop windows, I'm sure, looking at results. It can all be a bit overwhelming, but uh, I do agree. You're the go-to bracket guy. You got to be on your A game at this time of year. I do wonder how like how overwhelming it is for him because he's been doing it for so long. People make jokes that he's trapped in a basement somewhere in a bunker, Bracket bunker. for ESPN and, and just sits in there and looks at these things all day. I always think about one thing that Gabe Diarman told us when he was on here. It's like, if you don't get that rush from what you're doing, you're in the wrong industry. I hope he still gets that rush, but at the same time, it, it feels like it should just be like, <laughs> mental math like he's just doing everything it's like do 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 like it's just like he's a he's the computer at this point for ESPN right. and all this stuff I I think I think we should knock on him I think this is this yeah. is one of those things you're going to get relegated Joe I think I think someone should step in and I know a guy that's really big into basketball and he's on the show he's he's biting at your heels right now Joe Ooh, I might know that guy. you guys can guess who it is I think I guess know that guy is. you think you know he could, he, could, he could step in and cook yeah yeah. Yeah, Joe, Joe, you're being coming after. Um all right, yeah, that's it's tough, tough, tough season for Joe Lenardi. We're gonna have a uh, more bracketology as I accidentally sorry for sending you the wrong tweet, Kenny. Bad graphics. It's okay. Bad graphics to pull up. Uh next. Uh oh. 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 Uh oh, Kenny. Uh oh, Kenny. Time? What time is it? What time is what time it? Time is it, Kenny? It's not a Oh man. <laughs> Oh my goodness, brother. Wow. Uh, all right. We're starting off in number five. 21. Can you do something for me? Can you win a conference championship for me? 21. 21. Not apparently. Can 21 uh, conference tournament number one seeds. That's right, folks. 21 seat number one seeds in their conference tournaments did not win their respective conferences. Bad day to be a number one seed. It says in the headline on your screen. It was a good day for brackets and bid stealers. Those on the bubble, not so much. Twenty number one seeds, you are some frauds. Even if you made the big games, gotta gotta throw a party for my seed ones. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> moving on to number four, uh, we got Pitt basketball. We touched on them earlier. That horrible, horrible uh, non-con strength of schedule. They um, Pitt basketball after they were rightfully snubbed from the NCAA tournament. Uh, decided to, to give a middle finger to the, uh, where did my graphic go? To the NIT bracket. Um, they, they announced that they were wrongfully snubbed and that they will not be going to the NIT like they're UNC or some blue blood. Hey, you are pit basketball. You lost to Mizzou this year. Too bad, so sad. Uh, pit basketball is um, the number four frog for me. Number three in the fraud rankings. Why is James crying? Because he just got dunked on. I went to a bar last night. The bouncer saw my shirt, and it was Bad Boys are back in town. Old Detroit Pistons shirt. He said he misses that era of basketball. I swear this guy was only five years older than me. He never lived through that. And he said to me that LeBron James ruined basketball, and he's a fraud. He's a yeah. baby. And the game is not competitive anymore because of LeBron James. Wow. Yeah, like quitter. Full take. Old takes. Jordan better. Uh, Kenny, it sounds like you're the, that guy's fraud of the week because I disagree. Number <laughs> two. Na, 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 na. Na, 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 na. Hey, hey, hey. Good riddance to the bane of the Big Ten and the biggest man in the Big Ten. Zach Eady, he was eliminated at the semifinal stage of the Big Ten tournament by the Badgers of Wisconsin. He was just a foul drawer. He's a fraud. He's so annoying to play against. He's tall, uh, and I'm so glad he's not in my This does not right. look like a foul to me. Well, this really just looks kind of clean. Shut like, up. It doesn't You're the fraud of the week. Shut up. One, but Stop it. That looks What's clean. Number one, uh, number one uh, we're, we went yeah. way over time because Knowlton decided to, to say some stuff about uh, Zach Eady and Purdue. Uh, the selection committee and really their originality, uh, that's, that's the number one fraud because – in both the men's and women's uh, NCAA bracket, Nebraska and Texas A&M, they're playing, folks. And why is that funny? Because Nebraska's AD Trev Alberts just took the job for Texas A&M last week. Um, so there's a bit of blood, bad blood there. Um, also, bonus uh, shout out to the committee for being frauds for not doing the right thing and putting the Missouri Tigers in the CBI. <laughs> There you go. Good frauds. Uh, 
Peyton, that's a foul. What are you talking about? This one comes from our favorite TV series, uh, the Today Show. Um, guys, guys, what kind of music do elves listen to? Uh, short people music? Yeah, sh short. Shorts? Correct! Rap music, guys. Rap, like W-R-A-P, rap oh. music. Uh, there it okay. is. There it is. Dress rehearsal. Dress rehearsal? Anyways, so there we go. Like this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Let me flip it. Uh, all right. Good, Where do you go show. to see the jokes on here, Peyton, so everyone can find these? I'll never tell. You look up joke of the day, and it just comes up for me. Wow, 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 is it very nice? Joke of the day. 7,000 results. Oh, my God, we got seven. You should, why didn't you tell a St. Patrick's Day joke? Yeah, by the way, happy belated St. Patrick's Day. I this isn't movies. the article I use. It's tell a funny St. Where do leprechauns joke. play baseball in a little league? Patty Long Legs. <laughs> Oh, these stink. <laughs> what do uh, leopards? Yeah, hope... Wow. What do horses wear for good luck shoes? That's funny. That's, that's a good bad. one. No, that's, that's, that's good one. you're not even trying. You're not even trying. <laughs> not even that trying. is a good one. I'm gonna remember that one. <laughs> this has gone off the rails. <laughs> All right, let's end this. Let's end this. Um, <laughs> hope everyone enjoys March Madness. What are you looking up? I don't know what he's looking up. Uh, you don't know. You didn't okay. see what the words I, on I his screen I said. I, I couldn't see what his screen said. All right. He's, why is he just running away? Stay in here. What are you doing? Um, yeah. Let's end the show. Hope everyone enjoyed. Uh, enjoy March Madness. If you're watching, Mizzou won't be in there. Uh, we'll have any news that comes out, maybe, maybe in the AD search front um, and anything else going on basketball transfer news maybe there'll be a bunch of guys entering the portal now that seasons are gone oh the other thing i meant to mention with march madness um long beach state who made the tournament uh after parting ways with their head coach do you think uh mizzou might do that with dennis next year they'll go like over and then win the sec tournament and then they'll be like well we're gonna fire dennis long but then beach mizzou goes on a miracle run huh long beach didn't go over i uh, yeah i guess they didn't go over but like sure. Mizzou have another bad season. They'll fire Dennis, but then they'll make the tournament. And then that'll be his last hurrah. You're muted. You're muted, dude. Good Lord. Under C.Y. Oh. Young. There you go. That's all he wanted to say. All right. We're done here. I hope everyone, uh, hope everyone has a fun and I'll safe week. Dress rehearsal. Dress rehearsal. Let Kirk send this one off. Big Kirko wakes up dripping. Big Kirko wakes up dripping. We'll see you on month, fr month Friday. Oh, I botched that. We'll see you on Friday. <laughs>